How many people here in the audience have made a mistake they wish they could take back? Yeah, we all have. In the late 1960s, early 1970s, a group of scientific oceanographers, government officials, and a private corporation, which I won't name, but they've been in business for a good number of years, came up with an idea to put use old car tires as an artificial reef. It's called Osborne Reef. They sunk roughly 1.5 million tires over 30 football fields of ocean floor in about 70 feet of water off Sunrise Boulevard. Now, if you're going to make a mistake, make a small one first. They made a big one. Now, this reef is an environmental disaster because when they put those tires together, they bundled them with a metal clip. And within two to three years, that clip disappeared, setting all those tires free. See, they only weigh three pounds underwater. And what you don't realize is the ocean is a powerful place. It picks those tires up and moves them. They are literally rolling over our reefs off the Florida coast, the only natural coral reefs in the United States. These tires are rolling over the reefs, and eventually, with big enough storms, they're picked up and washed literally right up on the beach. So when this crazy German artist from Berlin contacted me and said he wanted to start collecting these tires and make an artificial project out of it, I said, you're crazy. What do you know? You don't even scuba dive. All you've seen is pictures, and you don't live here. And yet, I knew this couldn't be done. The problem was just too big. We had no budget. I'd worked on pilot projects with Nova Southeastern University where with $50,000, we collected only 5,000 tires. The state of Florida spent $2 million with the US Navy, and they only collected 50,000 tires. And so instead of saying no, I gave them a shopping list. I told them I need a dive boat, I need a work boat with a crane to lift those tires. We're going to have to haul those tires to the dock. Two weeks later, he sent me a picture of this boat. It's a 97-foot work boat. That crane can lift 6,000 pounds, which is about 250 tires. Will that do? I'm like, yeah. How did you do that? And it's his vision. He started talking to as many people as he could about his vision and what he wanted to accomplish. And that's when I snapped. Because I'm an executive coach. This is what I do for a living. I take people from where they are and get them to where they want to go. And so I decided to take Hannes on as a client, as a penance for my sin. <laughs> and then I started wondering, what was so motivating about it? Why did I care? And I just happened to be reading the book Drive by Daniel Pink. And he explains the levels of motivation. And he got me at level three, purpose, autonomy, and mastery. He gave me a clear purpose that we are going to build awareness about this reef. We're not going to be able to clean it up. Since he didn't scuba dive, he gave me complete autonomy over how I was going to do it, because he didn't know. And because I've been scuba diving for 10 years to depths of 200 feet, thousands of feet back in the caves in Gainesville, I knew that this was now a personal challenge for me and my ability to master. So we had to overcome problems. The commercial dive boats wouldn't take out recreational divers. Recreational dive boats couldn't lift the tires. We had insurance issues. Did we need permits from the government to pull these up? But when you have a vision, you just keep inspiring people. It's not the people who say no. It's finding the people that you can inspire. And when Jeff Turode from South Florida Diving Headquarters said, I have two dive boats. One's big enough to haul the tires. One's big enough to take the divers. I'm in. Then the divers came. And we simply got some polypropylene line, went down in 70 feet of water, and started stringing up tires wherever we found them. And as we just kept stringing them up, we brought down lift bags, big underwater balloons, and attached them to the line, filled them up with gas. And before you know it, 10, 20 tires at a time started rising out of the ocean floor and coming to the surface. Luckily, that was the end of my job. We didn't have a crane, but we had a four horsepower engine powered by Kelvin Klein. <laughs> uh, sorry, it's a sight gag. You can't see his underwear label, but you get it. And if you look at Hans, he's at the front of the line in the yellow shirt. As soon as I got those tires up, my work was done, but they had to figure out how to get them on the boat 
and we made a big mess underwater. But Hans was there first. He wanted those tires, and as soon as he saw them, he jumped into the water, got to the front of the line, and started pulling them on the boat with all of his might. They solved the problems in the moment. And even though we only got 80 out of those 250 tires, we got massive press. How many of you have been to Eclipse? It's right here in the Art Design District at Charis Weinberg. There's over 80 tires there. And we got in the news, we're on WLRN, and I'm here right now talking to you about it. So now you know that it's there. When we need to spend taxpayer money, it's okay, because you understand what it is. And sometimes it just takes a few people with a little bit of vision to make that happen. And if you want to know more, I put all the links up on my blog. That's my five minutes. Have a wonderful evening.